Hello and welcome back to my crossover tutorial RPG Maker MV versus um, <laughs> Campaign Cartographer 3. Not really versus, but yeah. Um, I'm uh, In the last video I've showed you how you can make a beautiful looking map in the Campaign Cartographer 3 software. And now I'm going to show you how you're going to use this map as a uh, map in the Camp in, in the RPG Maker MV. If you want to use this um, for another uh, RPG Maker, you can also do this by just tweaking a little bit around with the numbers, but this video is gonna be for RPG Maker MV. So, first of all, we're gonna use some calculations. Uh, I've got my calculator right here. Um, and we're gonna determine the uh, output sizes in pixels for the image. Um, for this, we're gonna gonna count how many how many tiles we got here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, twenty. It's twenty by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So. We get 20 by 16 tiles, and um, we, we really only need this um, dimension, uh, the width, uh, to determine um, our picture size, but we will use the height to control it later. Um, the tile set size in the RPG Maker MV is 48, uh, yeah, 48 pixels per tile, so we're gonna use the number of tiles times the um, size tile per pixel uh, pixel size per tile and we get 960 pixels in width this is not too big for this kind of maps um, if you use bigger uh, export sizes in this um, program you get better looking results but they would not fit into the RPG maker um, because of the resolution so um, what we're gonna do is um, first of all, make sure <laughs> um, your um, sheet effects are turned on. Um, so activate your sheet effects and deactivate the grid layer, hide the grid layer. Because we don't want the... Oh, what's happened? What happened now? I'm gonna activate this and yeah, now it worked. Um, and the stuff like this sometimes happens. <laughs> okay, um, we've got our map here, and uh, it looks like it should look. The sheet effects are turned on, so we got the glowing outlines, the rivers are blending in, the streets are blending in, stuff is blurred out, and stuff like that. Uh, depending on your map style, there's a variety of, of stuff going on here. And we got uh, we got rid of our grid layer because we don't want it to show up in the map later on. So yeah, that's it. Um, we're gonna go and use save as, and uh, we're gonna use a rectangular section PNG, not just PNG, because if you just use PNG, you will get an ugly border around this thing. Um, we're gonna use rectangular section PNG and we're gonna go into the options here and oh I already got the 960 from the last example I was doing um, so type in your um, type in your 960 here or whatever kind of uh, whatever dimension you got <coughs> um, and uh, leave the height um, to a very big number uh, because if you choose the option crop image size, uh, crop crop image to aspect ratio, you like it says here, you get the uh, the the, the correct uh, dimensions. I don't, I'm not sure if you need to select restrict image to map border, but I'm gonna leave it on uh, because last time uh, this gave me a, a stupid looking border. Um, yeah, I'm gonna choose maximum quality and maximum compression here. Uh, not progressive and I think we're ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is um, uh, we're gonna select a place where our uh, map is gonna go and I'm gonna uh, use your use your uh, sorry uh, project file <laughs> order uh, 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 project 
um, f uh, file. Damn it, I forgot the uh, English word for this. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, and you see, put it under IMG into your project and parallax. Um, what you want to do now is you want to choose a, a file name beginning with an exclamation mark. You want to you want to have an oops, uh, you want to have an exclamation mark in front and then just uh, choose a file name. Any file name will do and type .png. Don't let it be set to the um, standard uh, version. If you if you do this, the program, the, the software will give you uh, uppercase PNG and the um, uh, campaign cartographer will not recognize it if it's uppercase. So type in the, um, the, the, the extension uh, by hand. Choose save and what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a cursor and now the, the software wants you to select the part of the map you want to export. So what we're going to do is I'm um, going to zoom out. Um, you can do this while you're saving. Uh, um, zoom in the window zoom part and you're going to gonna choose a tiny 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 uh, rectangular around this uh, top left uh, corner here and be very precise and select the exact pixel exact uh, place where your your uh, corner is like wait a second I, I had it a moment ago yeah like that click once now you see there is a rectangle uh, coming up yeah you zoom out Wait a second. This takes a while. Yeah, we're gonna save. Um, we're gonna save while we're gonna save. Yeah, totally. Um, totally makes sense. Um, uh, click the uh, click the zoom again. Select the other side. Wait. It always draws it with all of the uh, sheet effects, so it takes a while. And again, choose the exact right pixel here yeah like that and if you click it's gonna render and if your size is not 960 if it's a little bit bigger this might take a while if your size is maybe 5000 or something for whatever reason uh, this might even take a coffee break or something depending on your computer and um, if it's done uh, you will have uh, your file here we go, here it is. Um, and we got a file size by 960 times 769. And um, I'm gonna go and um, I do remember that the um, tile number in height was 16. And we're gonna again multiply this by 48 and we, we're off by one, which could mean that we got a little bit of a pixely borders thing, but I don't think this will be much of an issue. We'll we'll see. If it if it is an issue, I'm gonna do the export stuff again. But I I think being off by one is okay. But if you if you recognize, oh wait a second, I'm off by whatever, um, then something went wrong. Yeah, this is this is good to control um, uh, if you if you've done everything correctly. So switch over to your RPG Maker and oh finally yeah the RPG Maker now we're talking um, and we're gonna go ahead and create a new map. I'm gonna create it right in the Steam, uh, right in the stem well, main folder here. Folder was the word I was looking for earlier. Um, and we're gonna go um, give your map a title or whatever and choose the um, the width and height you determined earlier so 20 times 16 in my case um, then you're gonna choose a paradox background and of course you're gonna choose your file name and that's pretty much it uh, for now um, and here we go there's your map I think there's a little white border in the top corner that sometimes happen. I'm not 
totally sure how to pr uh, how to prevent that, but it's not too much of an issue. Um, to test this, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up my player starting position here. Uh, I'm gonna test run this. F4 for full screen, and I'm just gonna go and uh, yeah. Here we go. Um, and you right away notice you cannot move at all. Um, and now you see now you see why I talked about uh, the 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 pixel uh, size will not be too great. Yeah, stuff is a little bit pixely, but it looks way better than the original tile set, in my opinion. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'll leave. Oh, oops leave completely and um, yeah so how, how can I make my character move around here um, essentially that's where the Yunfly plugin comes into play and if you know anything about um, a parallax mapping you'll you know where I'm gonna go with this yeah select your plugin manager and um, select the uh, re region restrictions plugin if you haven't yeah uh, already um, just Select it from the list and uh, add it to your to your plugins. And um, you're gonna need um, you don't gonna need these two. You're gonna need an all allow region. I'm gonna set it to one here. And you're gonna go to your regions part. Uh, go to the map. And for now, I'm gonna cover the complete um, map into this one region. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna, gonna save again and go another round. So, <clears throat> and now you're able to move around. Of course, you're now able to move around everywhere, and this is just a picture. Uh, but yeah, it works. And you see, um, when I move around the map, it scrolls with the character. Yeah, that's that's the part, the important part. If you don't put an exclamation mark in front of your file size, uh, a file name, um, the the picture is gonna uh, gonna stay fixed in place, and this is uh, really not going to to do anything uh, useful. Um, so to bind the picture to the map, so to say, uh, you use these exclamation mark. So now is the time to determine where your character can walk and where it cannot. And this is where usually the problems begin, because um, this kind of map style is never perfect for a grid like this. Um, uh, you can also use the uh, complete opposite. You can have a transparent tile set where your character can walk over in every direction and you, then you can set a region to restrict everything. Uh, usually that's the way I do it, but in this this is easier for beginners. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete all the parts where the player cannot walk over. So like, um, like this here. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm gonna gonna one by one uh, determine uh, the blockage part. Yeah, what I'm cutting out here is the blockage, not the um, not the part where the player walks, the play part where the player is prevented from walking. So I, I think this is okay because the lower part is mainly land, and yeah, you, you, sometimes you you've got to make choices. Because this is a, um, an edge case, and uh, it's it's getting even worse with the um, uh, mountain parts here. Because I didn't pay too much attention when I created this uh, to the uh, places where the player can go. Um, I just didn't didn't have the grid in my mind when I made the mountains. So uh, you should do that. You should have your grid in mind uh, when you create mountains. Uh, because this can be, yeah, I'm gonna go, go, don't be too, don't be too restrictive, but also don't be too generous with the um, places where the character can walk. Uh, if I want this castle to have any effect, I don't want the player to be walking around it, so this should be fine here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete some more over here. Um, yeah, that's okay-ish. Um, 
So this looks fine for now. Um, you can play around with this a lot and you can also use other methods to determine where your uh, player can go. Like um, I usually use a different method. I um, uh, use a, a transparent uh, tile set where, um, where you can determine exactly where your player can go from which tile to which tile so you can maybe walk on this tile and walk on this tile but you cannot go across or something or you can only walk in one direction but that's really up to you to figure this all out um, this is this is the easy way to just do an overland map and have a uh, places where you can walk and places where you can't um, I'm gonna test this again and yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, you cannot cannot walk over the mountains right now. You can uh, walk around them, um, and you can get stopped by these mountains. You get stopped by the ocean, and that's essentially what it what this is all about. Yeah. Um, of course, you now would like to uh, set some events for the city. So when when the player reaches a certain tile, uh, gets teleported to a city. Um, you might even wait a second. Well, I, I'm not sure if I if I have paid enough attention to uh, to this part here. Yeah, this this is this is okay. This is okay. I can I can reach this here. Um, probably you should force some encounters on the on the way over here, or maybe whatever. Yeah, you can you can do whatever you want to. Um, if you use the bush region in the forests. Oh, wait a second, I'm gonna try this. Um, I'm gonna gonna go ahead and um, uh, oh, wait, can I can I do this? Um, region restrictions, there's no, no, there's no bush region over here. Uh, it's the it's the overlay, um, it's the overlay uh, uh, plugin. I'm not gonna use this here. Um, so never mind. Um, forget what I'm saying. Uh, you could figure out a way to to make the um, the forest appear uh, half transparent over your lower body or something. Um, there are plugins for this. Um, you can figure it out if you if you're into this kind of stuff. Um, that's it for this tutorial. I think that's enough for now. Um, I think you now have the tools to build. An astonishing looking uh, map and uh, transport it into your RPG Maker and use it as a nice uh, looking overland map that does not look like every other RPG Maker game you ever saw. Um, that's mainly the, the the main reason for this for this thing here. Um, well, maybe you're standing a little bit on the water here, but I don't think that's too bad. Um, um, you can pay much more um, uh, uh, attention to all the details if you want to. You see, this looks this looks totally okay. Um, you can pay a lot more uh, attention to the details. You can cut out the the little white border here and maybe uh, or maybe fill it up with something. You can um, get a few pixels over here or something. Um, just to use your common sense. Um, yeah, I hope you like this tutorial. I hope you learned something. I hope uh, you give this video a thumbs up and I hope you create great looking beautiful maps for your RPG MV projects. Um, yeah, have a nice day and bye.